In this uh, little quick video, I want to talk about the 2006 HSC Physics Question 21, which deals with superconductivity. Um, but particularly, I want to look at how to answer this question, which is a long response question. So it's more about how to address a long response question using this question as an example. So the question asked here is, um, assessing the impact of society and environment of the potential applications of superconductors. Uh, it's worth six marks. It'd be worth pausing briefly um, if you want to try it. But let's pull this question apart. And there's a couple of things we need to look at. And in answering a question that's worth this six marks, um, you really need to consider how much time you need to spend on this question. My advice to you is, is that you spend approximately one and a half to two minutes per mark. So a six mark question should take you about 10 to 12 minutes to complete at the most. Um, and of those um, 10 minutes or so, I strongly advise you to spend a minute or two just planning at your response. So in end plan, planning at a response, one of the things I would encourage you to do is first of all, is to look at uh, some of the key words. So the first word is assess. And assess really is about making a judgment. Okay, so if you're making a judgment, you, then you weigh the evidence. So you're looking at the pros and the cons, and you then decide explicitly where you believe is whether it's a pro or a con. So you've got to make that judgment. The next aspect is to look at that. Look at ultimately the question is about potential applications of superconductors. So when you think of that, what are the potential applications of superconductors? Well, according to the syllabus, there's maglev trains, there is um, electricity distribution, All right. there is computing, right. and obviously. Um, in terms of that, we're looking also at motors and generators. Okay, so now we've got the idea of potential applications and now we need to looking at the impact of these things on society and the environment. So now you start thinking about, okay, what are the positive impacts of these things and the negative things on society and so forth. Now six marks, are, clearly you don't need to cover all of these with the positives and the negatives for society and environment, but you clearly need to enunciate or explain some positives of society and some negatives of society and some positive environment, negative society, using these as examples. And so you would start to think about, okay, what are the positives on society? So let's look at the maglev. Right? And the maglev, of course, if we talk about the positives, and I'm using a real quick table format here, um, then what we're saying, okay, what about the magnet positives? Ultimately, it's about transportation and ease of transportation, and you could argue that basically means a more connected society. Okay. Negatives can say, look, there's a high cost value, and of course, the cost value would be uh, you know, in terms of on society, in terms of, um, you know, the economy. So remember, it's not talking about on the individual, it's about society. Um, when we're talking about electricity distribution, again, we're just concentrating on society at the moment. Well, electricity means, obviously, when you have distribution and using superconductors, you're having lower energy loss, in fact, no energy loss, and so therefore electricity is cheaper. And if electricity is cheaper, that means a greater cost standard of living. Okay, uh, so you could um, look at a greater standard of living. On terms of the negative, you could argue, okay, electricity may be cheaper to, um, to distribute, but actually the infrastructure to set this up would actually have a high cost and therefore would have a negative impact on the standard of living because electricity costs will actually rise as a result. So I've given you a couple of examples here. Um, you can continue on with those concepts over there in terms of you know, how that may be positive or negative and so forth. Faster computing means more technology, increased faster technology, motion generators. Again, you're talking about more efficient motors. 
Uh, and of course, things are going to cost less and therefore that's on society. But let's not forget environment. So if we start to look at the environment in terms of the positives and negatives, then what we have is, okay, let's look at the maglev. Well, we're looking at a large infrastructure, so we're looking at damage to the environment of setting up these tracks. But you could say, so that's a negative impact on environment, but you could also argue, well, maglevs uses um, uh, superconductors, and so therefore you haven't got fuel being used, and therefore uh, not burning into, let's say, you know, carbon gases and so forth, uh, carbon dioxide gases or greenhouse gases. And so therefore, that has a positive impact on the environment. Electricity distribution has a negative impact on the environment because you're setting up these uh, larger infrastructure to cool these lines and so forth. Whereas um, if you can say, well, a positive aspect of the environment is, well, there's no energy loss, therefore we don't have to burn so much coal. And so clearly you can see I'm, a set, I'm looking at a number of positives and negatives on both society and environment using a number of potential applications of superconductors. Finally though, I then need to explicitly state what I believe is the impact. So I might say at the end, uh, based on my assessment of both positives and negatives in society and environment on these applications of superconductors, I come to the conclusion that overall these potential applications will have a positive effect on society and environment or they will have a positive effect on society and a negative effect, effect on the environment. It doesn't really matter as long as you make the assessment. I think it's really also helpful that you then look at how the marking criteria is as was provided by the Board of Studies. And here is the marking criteria. All right, so in this case, a person would get five or six if they've identified at least two applications. Well, I did that. And for at least two, so we're really looking at the minimum two, and I did at least two, and a third one or fourth one would be better, that you describe at least one impact on society and or environment. So really, five or six, we're looking at a strong response that looks at a positive for one and a negative for the other, or a positive for both and a negative for both, or something to that effect that you can mention both society and environment either as a positive and or a negative. And then really important, if you're gonna get that for marker, you've gotta make a value statement, you've gotta make that impact. And if you notice that for you to get a, a mark that is five or six, you need to make that value statement. Clearly, for a three or four, you identify two applications and you describe it. So it's really, um, in order to get more than two, you need to have two applications mentioned. Um, only two gives them for two applications, but nothing else, or you do an application and an impact, and clearly, if you say one thing, you get one mark. So there you have it. When you get a long response, pull the question apart plan on what you're going to say. And what I haven't mentioned yet is construct a response that is logical and succinct. If you get a question that is, you know, give you eight or 10 lines in the paper, then try to keep it within that space. Uh, by all means, there is extra paper available at the end of the exam, but don't use that ad nauseum. Um, you don't get any extra points or any marks by writing five pages when all is required is one page and in many long response questions the ability to be succinct and clear and logical is actually a key part of the marking criteria hope that helps you thanks very much i hope you found that video useful and remember like share and subscribe oh and if you have a comment or a question or you like a concept for me to explain to you please drop a comment down below I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.